I've made some tips and tricks videos for Unity before, and you can actually find a whole playlist with all of them in the description below. However, I've never really made a tips and tricks video aiming for beginners specifically. So in this video, we're gonna check out some of the most useful hidden tricks to Unity. And it actually doesn't matter if you're a beginner or not, because I believe you can still find something useful in this list, even if you're experienced with Unity. Also, you should have realized by now that I don't really have a face cam in this video in case you've been watching my content before, and that's because I'm in Sweden now to visit my family and friends, so I was unable to bring my camera here, unfortunately. No worries though, because about five or six videos will lack the camera only, and then I'll return home and continue using it. Either way, we're gonna get started with this video now, and if you have any suggestions on specific topics we should give tips and tricks about, like level design, tips over realistic graphics, and things like that, like specific targeted groups, let me know in the comment section and I'll definitely make a video out of that too. But now, let us get started by taking a look at the first tip. So the first tip of today will be a very basic start to the whole video. We'll start by focusing on the inspector window in Unity since it's literally one of the most important tabs out there. So you can move, copy, and paste components for each game object. If you highlight a game object and right click on a component, you have the options to move it up, down, and copy and paste it. If you copy it, you can actually paste it as a whole new component on the same or a different game object, or you can simply override the current values with the ones you copied from the previous component. This is super nice to use if you have like a set of new lighting properties you wish to use on a different light source too, and you don't really want to waste your time copy pasting one field at a time, which can easily become annoying. And moving on to the second tip, we're going to continue focusing on the inspector. So something really neat that you can do, which isn't known by a lot of people unfortunately is that you can enter mathematical functions in here. That means you can add, divide, subdivide, multiply and stuff like that in the fields. This allows for easier calculations instead of having to use something like a calculator while working on your projects. And the third tip is actually about the inspector as well, but much shorter. So if you're using a component like a script that you're not sure of how to use, that's my phone right there. <laughs> or if you don't understand the different properties and fields and stuff like that, you can simply hit this blue book with a question mark on it, which is an icon, and it will automatically take you to the documentation page for that script. You can also add this functionality into your own scripts if you're working on like an asset and wish to share the documentation through this neat little button right here. And now let us move to number four, and this tip is technically about all the different tabs in Unity. So something you can do is you can have multiple instances open of each tab simultaneously if you want to. So say you wanna have two different scene views because you're working simultaneously on two different places, you can do it. You may also have two inspectors open, lock one using the lock icon right here, and continue working on two different objects if you wish to copy like some values over, etc. And the fifth tip of today is by Unity Hub. So a lot of new Unity users don't actually know about this one, so I'll include it even though I've talked about it vastly before. Uh, there's an app called Unity Hub available on all platforms Unity is on, which you can use to locate your projects, Unity installs, and actually install new Unity builds, including alpha and beta, very easily, quickly, and in a more organized environment. So if you're working with multiple Unity versions or multiple projects like I do, this is so much useful because instead of having to like locate and relocate Unity builds every time you install something new, you can simply find the everything you want to and you need in the Unity Hub, which is one single place. And now, number six, you can save presets of your components. And you heard it right, say you have found the perfect new settings for let's say your camera object, right? And you wanna use it across all your cameras you add to your project from that moment on, you can simply highlight the camera object in the hierarchy, click on the sliders icon on the component you wish to save, and then hit the save current to button. And now you're just gonna need to basically pick the name and the location for this asset file you wish to save to, and then you just hit save. And now we've got ourselves the preset file. So next stop is all about telling Unity, hey, we're gonna change to this preset file because this is what we're gonna use. So we're gonna go to the unified settings window through edit, settings, and this time enter the preset manager. Now, if you hit this plus icon for the array list, you'll have your new preset in here. Pick it and all the new cameras you add to your project will use these settings from the preset. 
You can also edit the settings of it by hitting the preset file in the inspector, then edit everything you want to. You're obviously also free to create presets of all components you create and that are built into Unity, not just cameras. Moving on, number seven is super basic, but very crucial for working with Unity. And since this is a beginner friendly guide or kind of like a video, I just want to include this. So as you know, there is the transform, rescale, rotate, and the other tools at top left of Unity, right? You can, however, also switch to these using the Q, W, E, R, and T keys on your keyboard as shortcuts. However, something else people usually miss is that there is the Y key you can use as well, which I think was added in Unity 2018. I'm not really 100% sure on this, but it was added pretty recently and which basically enables all these tools simultaneously, which is so much fun. I've actually found myself use it surprisingly a lot when working on level design and so on, instead of switching between four to five tools constantly. And moving on to number eight, when working on your scenes, sometimes you might recognize that the lighting becomes weird and inaccurate and that Unity starts baking something that might take a while to complete depending on the size of your scene. This often happens when you have baked global illumination enabled, which simply bakes the entire lighting in your scene if you have baked lighting enabled or mixed lighting for your light sources in the scene. If you wish to skip baking while working on your scenes to see an actual real preview of how it all really looks, you can enter window, rendering, lighting settings, and disable baked global illumination under mixed lighting in the list. This is a nice feature to actually have enabled and it is suggested to have it enabled for like the maximum realism. However, I personally didn't really enjoy having an inaccurate lighting setup in my scene while actually building stuff where I had to wait for it to bake, you know what I mean? And it's so much easier, so disabling this allows me to work much more faster where I return to the setting after I'm done and enable this option again. So it's super simple to just like switch in between those. We only have two tips left now, so for number nine, we're gonna literally focus on objects. And I, yes, I did strike under the word focus because you're gonna realize my unintended but actually intended pun in just a moment. <laughs> so you can basically use the F key on your keyboard to focus on a single object, which just moves you to it in the scene view. However, besides moving you there, something else I use this for is simply when my camera in the scene starts clipping through objects when I get close to them, I basically highlight a small object like my camera in this scene, press F and it start, stops clipping on those larger objects. I believe Unity then focuses on the clipping path of the new object, which is the camera in this case. So this is like a neat little workaround, AKA like a trick, or maybe even like the intended way of actually stopping this clipping issue when you get close to an object because you obviously don't like you want to be able to see it fully that pun was bad i hate myself for it you're free to hate me for it but we're gonna move on to number 10 anyway so the last tip of this video is for all you 2d game makers out there i actually tweeted about this last night and if you haven't followed me yet make sure to do so because i tweet almost every day where i share useful stuff for everyone who uses unity basically so the last tip is that for 3d games right the new the way unity renders objects is by ordering them by the Z axis, meaning it takes depth into account. So the objects closest to the camera will be rendered first, which makes sense because they're going to be more visible than the ones that are further back. However, in 2D, we don't really have depth, right? And therefore, when making a 2D game, Unity can result in this weird overlapping issue as you can see on the screen right now and also from the tweet yesterday. So to solve this, we use the new unified settings window once again by going to edit and then enter settings. And here we'll visit the graphics tab this time around. In here, we have a couple of steps to do. So first and foremost, we will set the transparent layer mode to custom so that our changes replace the default settings and then we'll change the transparent layer axis from being 0, 0, 1 in X, Y, Z axis to 0, 1, 0. So basically we switch the Y and Z axis in here because it's gonna be 0, 0, 1, so Z is gonna be one, and we're putting a zero in Z and then putting one in Y. And this will tell Unity to literally just take height into account for rendering instead of depth 
because that's the way 2D works, right? We don't really, we just have horizontal and vertical. We don't really use depth for 2D. And by the way, just to mention, if you have any questions about these tips of today, definitely leave a comment on this video and we'll help you out. Also, if you have any other questions about Unity or game development and all that kind of stuff, you can leave a comment on this video. And also, I would strongly suggest you to join our Discord server, which is going to be linked in the description below and also in the pinned comment below. So make sure to join because we're we're like 8,500 people right now in the community and we're all like-minded, we're all game developers, and we love to use Unity for our game development workflow mainly, and we love to help other people. So make sure to join if you have any questions or you want to chat with people or maybe if you want to like see what others are working on and take inspiration and also ask for help and build teams. So yeah, that should give you a set of 10 tips and tricks for Unity, especially for beginners. But once again, if even if you're an experienced Unity developer or have been using Unity for a long time now, you may still find some really cool and neat hidden kind of tricks in this video and these videos actually. And once again, if you want to check out more like tips and tricks videos where there are that are very short, actually shorter than this one, make sure to check out the playlist in the description below because it's super nice. And I really enjoy making these videos. So definitely let me know your suggestions and your thoughts in the comment section. And if you have any feedback regarding how I can actually improve the series. And if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more, make sure to give it a thumbs up because it shows a lot of support. And also hit the subscribe button and, and turn on the bell notifications so you stay up to tune for new content and don't miss out on new Unity tips and tricks and beginner's guide and all these series that we make a video out of. So yeah, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I will be super active in the comment section and in our Discord server tonight, so I'm looking forward to see you guys there. Have a good night, guys, and peace out. I would also like to give a huge shout out to makeagame.com Richard Stance, Cupola, and everybody else who supports us on Patreon making these videos come true. You guys are awesome.